Okay, stacking try. I would like to introduce you to a new um, combinatorial object called Sterling Numbers of the Second Kind. Um, this is a, a, this is a, a, a solution to a problem that we don't know how to solve otherwise. And here's the problem. I have um, n objects. These ob objects are all distinguishable. And I would like to count the number of ways to distribute these n distinguishable objects into k indistinguishable containers, with every container receiving at least one object. Okay, uh, so imagine that this is your problem. Imagine you're working at a zoo, and you have some zoo animals. Let's pick a nice cute animal like a weasel. Suppose you have uh, three uh, weasels. And uh, you can't even tell those weasels apart from each other. And uh, your job is just to make lunch for the weasels and then to you know, bring them in one at a time and feed them their lunch and then uh, make sure you know, that when they're done eating they go to some other room. Uh, and um, there you go. Okay, well, what are we feeding weasels, of course? We're feeding them candy bars. Um, so suppose you have five um, candy bars. And these candy bars are all different from each other um, uh, because the candy bars themselves, uh, in this case, n is five, and um, and k is three. Uh, the candy bars are all distinguishable. So let's just imagine that your five candy bars are uh, Kit Kat um, and maybe like a nice Hershey Dark uh, and maybe. Um, Snickers, and maybe like a Milky Way, and Almond Joy. All right. So you have these um, uh, five candy bars, Kit Kat, Hershey Dark, Snickers, Milky Way, and Almond Joy. And your job is to prepare the uh, lunch for the weasels. Okay, and so what you do is you get your three weasel lunch boxes. And your three weasel lunch boxes are just three boxes, man. But, you know, the boxes, the containers, are indistinguishable. And that is in the sense that, um, uh, uh, in fact, let me be even more, uh, let me be even more explicit. Um, you've got these three, the three boxes are just kind of sitting here on a, um, on like a table in like a triangle and um, uh, and um, uh, on like a, you know, on like a kind of a spinny table. So okay, the point is that the, the boxes themselves are all um, completely indistinguishable from each other and all we care about is the number of ways of placing the uh, objects into the boxes. So. For example, one thing you might do is uh, put the Kit Kat in the in the first box. Uh, okay, uh, so here I'll draw a little picture. You put the Kit Kat here and the Milky Way with the Kit Kat, and over here you put the Almond Joy and uh, and the Hershey Dark, and over here you put the Snickers bar. Now notice that every container has to receive at least one object, which is to say you have to put at least one candy bar in each of the five boxes. Uh, 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 so, um, in the weasel boxes. So, um, none, none, none can be empty. You've got to give at least um, one uh, uh, candy bar to each weasel. But, uh, the boxes are indistinguishable, so all that matters is, is which candy bar is which uh, with which other candy bars, so to speak. You're just making three piles, basically. Okay, so that's one way to do it, but, you know, another way to do it is uh, to to, to maybe put uh, the Almond Joy with the Snickers and the Hershey and the, 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 the Kit Kat with the Hershey bar and then the Milky Ways alone. Okay, there's like a lot of these. Uh, and in fact, the answer to this problem would be uh, S53. Uh, and it turns out I just know that S53 is, is 25. Uh, so that's quite a lot, actually, ways, just with five candy bars and three piles uh, of dividing this up. All right, and uh, unfortunately, uh, just like with the, the partition numbers, there is no formula, well, asterisk, there kind of is a formula, 
but there is no simple, easy formula um, for the Stirling numbers. Uh, these are called Stirling numbers of the second kind, and never mind Stirling numbers of the first kind. Uh, there's no simple, easy formula which will give you um, the Stirling numbers uh, in terms of more simple objects. Okay, but there is, once again, a recursive rule. And uh, the recursive rule uh, goes like this. Uh, first of all, we just insist that, um, so, so, so let, uh, let n and, uh, and k be positive integers and um, uh, with, uh, with um, k, uh, well, yeah, I need at least one box, otherwise it's kind of stupid. And I also can't have more boxes than objects. So that's also kind of dumb. Uh, then, here's the theorem. The theorem is that uh, S N K is uh, S N minus 1 K minus 1 ah, um, K minus 1 plus uh, k uh, s uh, n minus 1 k. Okay, I pretty much know this, I think. I'll just put this down. Uh, oh, wait, no, a couple more maybe things to, to say. First of all, I just want this to be totally clear. Uh, okay. Uh, so I can't remember how I taught this in the past. Oh, and then there's some, some base cases um, with. Uh, here are the, the, the base cases to consider. S n k uh, is, is zero. If k is greater than n, well, it's kind of stupid because they said that that can't be. Um, if uh, k is greater than, but all right, that's what Gossett says. And uh, S um, n 1 is 1, he says. And it, additionally, S n n is 1. And S N zero uh, is zero for N greater than zero. Okay, so I guess this whole big thing is the theorem. It's the theorem which enables you to compute um, Stirling numbers of the second kind. Uh, so let's just look at this for a minute. Um, first of all, I think it's just obvious that S N K has to be zero if K is greater than N because um, you can't uh, put, um, yeah, if every, if every box, if every container uh, needs to contain at least one object, then if there are more containers than objects, then you just, you can't, there's no way to, to satisfy this. Um, this is really the important base case, which is that if you have uh, n in, uh, distinguishable objects, but there's only one box, then there's only one way to do it, which is to put every object into, um, uh, into, that, into that one box. Uh, this is, I don't think this is strictly speaking necessary for, uh, for, for establishing this recursive rule, uh, but it is maybe a nice thing just to, to convince yourself that is, is true. Uh, uh, and Gossett mentions it. So S and N is one. Okay, that's because if I have N distinguishable objects and N boxes, then there's only one way to execute that, which is to say, put one object in each box. Remember, the boxes themselves are, are indistinguishable. Okay, and finally, S and zero is zero. Okay, this is maybe a little bit stupid. If you have N objects, but you have no boxes, then there's just no way to do that. Uh, okay, uh, good. Why is this true? Okay, I don't think I have like a simple happy example for this. Uh, I thought I had a good lesson on this, but I can't remember what I used to do. Um, maybe we just talk it out with an example? Is that what I should do? Sure. Let's just talk it out with an example. Yikes. Um, so, uh, let's just let the numbers be something chill. So, Let's suppose uh, I want to do S N four. Okay. Well, um, according to this formula, S N uh, S nine four is uh, should be S uh, eight three uh, plus uh, 
4 times uh, S84. Um, okay, why should this be true? Okay, well, let's discuss. Um, so, imagine you're, you're uh, feeding the weasels, so to speak, and you have nine candy bars. Those candy bars are all different. Um, so, what are the nine candy bars? Uh, well, okay, I can probably name 20 different candy bars, but I'll just say we have nine of them, all different candy bars. We have four weasel boxes, and we would like to place the nine candy bars into four boxes. Um, uh, or, or rather, to divide up the nine candy bars into four piles uh, makes it sound even more um, like the piles are wherever they are. And all that matters for the, each candy bar is which uh, pile it's in relative to the other uh, candy bars, which is just another way of saying that the containers are indistinguishable. Okay, well what's this? This is the number of ways of uh, dividing eight candy bars up into uh, into uh, three piles. Well, that's kind of interesting. And then this is something else. Okay, so it sounds like what we should consider to try to understand this is the case in which uh, there's sort of one fewer candy bar, or perhaps uh, this extra last candy bar is special. So let's imagine that there's one candy bar which is uh, poison. Uh, and, uh, in fact, the title of that candy bar is Poison Bar. Um, and, um, you know, weasels can't read, so it's just called Poison Bar. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, if one of your nine candy bars is a, uh, Poison Bar, then, uh, being the, uh, uh, zoo, uh, keeper who is preparing these uh, weasel lunch boxes, um, you're going to think hard about what you're going to do with this, uh, with this poison bar. And um, you got to put it somewhere because we're distributing all nine bars. So where is this poison bar going to go? Well, uh, if you were going to poison a weasel, uh, this is getting kind of dark. Uh, this is all just a joke. I love weasels. Um, if you were going to poison a weasel though, for real, uh, how would you do it? Would you put the poison bar alone uh, in a uh, box, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a weasel box, such that the, the weasel that's going to receive that bar would receive only that poison bar? Or would you try to kind of smuggle the poison bar in uh, another larger pile containing other bars? Um, well, uh, those are your two options. And all the possible ways to distribute nine uh, distinguishable candy bars to four weasel boxes. Of all of those boxes, um, the, weas the poison bar is going to end up somewhere. And there are only two cases. There's the case in which the poison bar is alone, and there's the case in which the poison bar is not alone. So if the poison bar is alone, or if the poison bar uh, is not, alone, uh, then uh, we can, uh, that exhausts all possible uh, cases, and so uh, that is the, that's what I knew to do because of this big plus here. Okay, well, if the poison bar is alone, then you've basically decided to just put the, 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 the poison bar uh, in its own box with no other candy bars with it. And so if that's your decision, then, well, you have eight remaining candy bars, and those eight remaining distinguishable candy bars are to be uh, distributed to the three remaining weasel boxes. So there you go. On the other hand, if you decide in advance to, to, that the, that the, uh, that the um, poison uh, bar uh, is, uh, uh, is going to be mixed in with other candy bars, well then, uh, let's first distribute the eight uh, remaining uh, candy bars to the four weasel boxes, and there are, by definition, S84 uh, ways to do that. Uh, S84, a certain number of the second kind, says that we, um, this is the number of ways to distribute eight uh, uh, distinguishable candy bars, the non-poisoned ones, to the four uh, indistinguishable weasel boxes, and then you simply put the 
the poison bar into one of those four boxes. Uh, so for every way there is to distribute the eight candy bars to the four boxes, um, there are, uh, there is, well, <coughs> there are four ways to, uh, to distribute the poison bar because you just put it in one of those, those four boxes. And so you multiply by four. Okay, this was a decent explanation. Uh, and so the general case is just exactly the same, right? If you have n objects and you want to, dis and you want to uh, uh, distribute those n distinguishable objects into k boxes, then you um, first, since all the objects are distinguishable, it is fair to call one of them important in some kind of way. So the boring way to do this would be to say that one, let's, let one of the objects be red or something like that. Uh, uh, what are we going to do with the red object? Are we going to place the red object alone in a box? If so, then one of our boxes has now been accounted for, the one that's going to hold only the red object, and there are thus n minus 1 remaining objects and k minus 1 remaining boxes, and thus there are this many ways to distribute those objects to those boxes. On the other hand, if the red object is going to be not alone in a box, then let us first um, distribute the remaining n minus 1 objects, or the other n minus 1 objects, to the k boxes. And having done that, we now have k uh, choices for where to place the, um, the red object. And so for every way there is to, to, to distribute the non-red objects, uh, then there are k ways to distribute the red object, uh, and so hence we multiply. Okay, I think that's pretty clear. Um, check the timer. Um, 16 minutes, eh? Okay. Uh, good. What we are now prepared to do is to solve um, uh, an entire broad range of so-called occupancy problems. Okay. Uh, what are occupancy problems? Well, they're ones that we've just been doing, and we also did some of them uh, once upon a time forever ago. Uh, they are problems investigating the number of ways to uh, occupy certain containers, or to put it in more of an active voice, um, it's the number of ways to uh, the number of ways uh, uh, to um, distribute uh, objects to certain containers. Okay, uh, good. And there is some notation here <coughs> because there are sort of three uh, uh, axes, uh, so to speak, uh, with which we can uh, consider these occupancy problems. There are the, oh, and you should get out right now, uh, pause the video, this worksheet called Occupancy Problems, uh, which I passed out on the last day of school, or you can uh, download it. Um, so uh, here we go. Uh, and so um, this is Gossett's notation. Uh, o, ah, oh, the three axes are whether the objects are distinguishable. So are we um, passing out uh, uh, candy bars that are all different candy bars, or is it just like, do I just have like 20 Snickers bars? And so I can't tell them apart from each other. Are the... Um, so this stands for, OI stands for objects uh, indistinguishable. Objects, oh, this is a, um, oh no, this is not a, objects indistinguishable. I thought I had a typo. Indistinguishable. And OD stands for objects distinguishable. Um, distinguishable. Okay, this is a really fun lesson to do live, and it's a sucky lesson to do um, on a video like this. Uh, anyway, whatever. And then we have the containers. The containers themselves could be uh, distinguishable or indistinguishable. So this stands for containers uh, indistinguishable. Indistinguishable. Uh, and containers distinguishable. Um, distinguished. Okay, and then there's one more uh, idea, which is uh, can um, some objects be empty? So um, the, this uh, empty set notation is a signifier for uh, empty uh, containers uh, are permitted, and 
and not empty just means empty containers not permitted. Okay, all this is on the worksheet as well, plus we're going to do it right now. Okay, so here we have, I'm going to divide this whole board. Am I going to do this? Sure I am. Um, you really need to have this uh, worksheet in your hand, otherwise this doesn't work. Um, so, cha and cha. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, we have, yikes. Uh, and um, the, 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 the chart kind of, Mm, the chart kind of looks like this. Uh, objects indistinguishable, containers indistinguishable, uh, not empty. Uh, and then objects indistinguishable, containers indistinguishable, empty. And then objects distinguishable. Uh, I think I want to go across maybe. Uh, no, no, no. I want to go... Boy, how did I do this? Yeah, okay, no, I want to go down. Objects distinguishable, containers indistinguishable, uh, not empty, and finally, objects distinguishable, containers indistinguishable, empty. No, not finally, because there's four more. Uh, this video sucks. Uh, all right, this is such a fun lesson to do live in class. Um, oh well. Um, and here we are, objects indistinguishable, containers distinguishable, empty. Okay, um, good, 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 woo, we do it. Uh, okay, so what's going on here? Well, I'm not gonna write all these words out, but they're all on the paper, and I will say them all out loud. Uh, for each of these eight scenarios, I've created stories, and the stories involve my memory from, you know, 1986 or whatever, of um, elementary school, specifically kindergarten. In kindergarten, you uh, are just like in that one little room and you know, some people are like peeing their pants still, <coughs> and you have a teacher. And uh, what I remember about kindergarten is snacks. You would just get snacks. Like I don't remember what they were, but milk was involved. And, um, and, uh, and oh, and on this, uh, Snickers bars are involved, apparently, and candy bars, good, woo! Uh, and um, so, what happened is, uh, this is my memory of my kindergarten, I don't know what your kindergarten is like. Um, you would uh, get the food, it was like too hard to get the kindergartners to like go to the cafeteria, that was like too hard. And so um, they would just bring the food to your class, and so it's kind of amazing, and then it just never happened again the rest of your life. You'd just be chilling in your classroom, and like some person would come with a giant tray and would just start passing out. Uh, um, uh, uh, meals to every single kid in the class. Okay, uh, and so, um, so, now, imagine, this setting the stage, imagine that you are a cafeteria worker, and you are going to, uh, so there are uh, K kids in this class. Uh, so there are uh, K uh, kids in the class. Uh, in the class, and your job is to um, uh, your job is to uh, prepare some uh, meals for these kids. But you're the cafeteria worker, so you're not actually giving the meals to the kids. You're just preparing the meals, and so you are simply creating on some giant tray K boxes. And when that tray is brought by someone else to uh, uh, the kindergarten classroom, then they will be dispersed to the various kindergartners. But for now, in your mind, you're just making some boxes, man. Okay, so the very first object says, the very first question says, suppose you're a cafeteria worker, and you have N Snickers bars. I guess I am gonna write this. You have N Snickers bars, and you have um, uh, K bags. And these K bags are to be sent to a kindergarten classroom where no bag can be emptied. Okay, so first of all, note that for this very first problem, you're only passing out Snickers bars. So you, there's no choice as to who gets what bar. Or there's rather, there's no choice as to, uh, yeah, as to who gets what bar. Um, but, <coughs> and also you're just preparing the bags, which are gonna be brought down to the classroom by someone else. But what's relevant here is that N is probably in general bigger than K. In other words, you have like 
you know, 20 Snickers bars, but there's only, you know, 15 people in the class, so that means some people are going to get more than one bar. But everyone has got to have at least one bar. You can't, you're a nice cafeteria worker. You can't just give someone, you can't just prepare one box with no Snickers bars in it. All right, so in the language above, we have objects indistinguishable because the objects to be distributed are Snickers bars and they're all just Snickers bars. So if you just have a bunch of N Snickers bars in your hand, you can't tell them apart from each other. The containers are indistinguishable as well because we're just putting stuff in bags. We don't know which bag is going to which kid. So it's just, they're just bags, man. And not empty means that no bag can be empty. How many ways are there to do this? All right, well, if you've been paying attention, uh, you will see that the answer to this is just P and K. What we were talking about in the previous video. Uh, because um, uh, that's exactly what P and K counts. We introduced it uh, initially as uh, <clears throat> the number of ways to express K um, uh, as a sum with precisely K sum ends, but more colorfully, it's just the way to, uh, to split the N Snickers bars up into K piles. And there are P and K ways to, to split N Snickers bars up into K piles, and splitting those Snickers bars up into piles is exactly what you do when you're preparing the K bags uh, to be sent down the hall. Okay, hopefully you're getting the, the hang of this. So now, let's mix it up a little bit. Suppose that the objects are still indistinguishable. So we are still just have... We still just have N Snickers bars. Um, but now, uh, and the containers are still indistinguishable uh, because we are still just preparing K bags. We're still the cafeteria worker, we still have Snickers bars. Um, so this is uh, N, uh, N Snickers bars. I'm not going to keep rewriting this every time. Uh, you, you really need to look on the paper. Uh, and, uh, but now we are allowing a touch of extra cruelty. Now empty containers are allowed. So it's possible that as you're the cafeteria worker, you could just choose to put no Snickers bars in one of the bags. The kid just gets a freaking empty bag. Uh, uh, well, how many ways are there to do this? Um, and it's not obvious how exactly to, to, to do this. Um, and if we were live in class, I would let you guys think about this and discuss it a whole bunch of times. Uh, but it turns out that the only real solution to this problem, well, there are two solutions. One, the simplest one, is to just say, okay, well, <coughs> if some bags can be empty, let me think of um, how many bags are going to be used. So PN1 is the number of ways to distribute the N objects into just one bag. What's up? Ann and I are going to pick up dinner. Cool. We'd get Theo up as soon as you are done with this video, which better be by six. All right. Good. Oh, yeah. I will be done by in five minutes. Nine minutes. Uh, so uh, PN2 is the number of ways of distributing the N Snickers bars into just two bags, where no bag is empty. Uh, PN3 is the number of ways of distributing the N Snickers bars into um, three bags, where no bag is, is empty, etc., etc. And so you're just, you're just casing it all out uh, with how many bags are used. And finally, all the way up to uh, P and K. And so um, this is sort of a, a more advanced version of the previous problem because if empty bags are allowed, then I have no direct way of dealing with that. Okay, this is the answer. And okay, usually in most uh, years, uh, we just leave it at that. But um, some years, some people live are very, very smart. And um, they bring up uh, at the moment a sort of deeper way of doing this. And the, the deeper way of doing this, uh, so, is to say, okay, well, if no bag, this is hard to explain, if no bag can be empty, <coughs> then what I might do to make this problem easier for me, suppose I have some giant table of these uh, numbers, uh, uh, these, um, these, these partition numbers, but I don't feel like adding a whole bunch of numbers up. What I could do is I could take my N Snickers bars, I could temporarily uh, reach down into a pile of some extra bars that I was going to use for tomorrow, K of them, and give myself N plus K bars. And if I have N plus K bars, uh, then 
and I distribute them into the K bags, then what I have just done is this counts the number of ways to distribute the n plus k bars, the original n bars plus k sort of extra bars that I borrowed from the next day, uh, into k bags. But built into the definition of, this, of these partition numbers is that no bag is empty. So this counts the number of ways to distribute the n plus k bars into the k bags where no bag is empty. But then, uh, if no bag is uh, empty, then I can simply now reach in and just take one candy bar out of every bag. And if I take one candy bar out of every bag, then some of the bags might now be empty, but that's okay here. And so this is an alternate solution, and if you clean that up a little bit, uh, what, I have just, what we have just seen is a kind of a, a combinatorial, what we have just stumbled upon is a, uh, another combinatorial identity that this equals this. Okay, uh, let's go a little faster now. Uh, how about now? What's, what has changed now? Now, what's changed is that we have no longer Snickers bars, but n totally different uh, Snickers bars. Um, but we are still the cafeteria worker. So we still don't know which bag is going to which child. Um, uh, so, and we're still preparing K bags, but now we have totally different bags. And also, uh, no bag can be empty, because that's the case that we're solving. So objects are distinguishable. All the candy bars are totally different. The containers are indistinguishable. We're just preparing K bags. Uh, the bags have no particular properties associated with them. And no bag can be empty. Well, this just is precisely SNK by definition. That's what Sterling numbers of the second kind uh, uh, were defined to be, the solution to this uh, particular counting problem. Okay, and now, this I think is the hardest one. <coughs> what if some bags can be empty? Well, maybe it's not that hard. Uh, so now the objects are distinguishable, so I still have n totally different candy bars. The containers are indistinguishable, so I'm still just preparing the bags. I'm still the cafeteria worker. But now some bags can be empty, so someone might not get any bar at all. Well, now I think the way to do this is to say, okay, well, I can either put the n candy bars into just one bag, or I can put the n candy bars into just uh, two bags, uh, or I can put the n candy bars into just three bags, uh, and finally, all up into SNK. In other words, I use the uh, sort of known uh, Sterling numbers of the second kind to, um, to write my solution here, and I, I, I'm sort of uh, doing casework on uh, the number of bags used. SNK, by definition, is the number of ways of, of, of putting uh, N indistinguishable objects into K indistinguishable indistinguishable containers where no container is empty, well here I just, uh, I go through by the number of uh, sort of non-empty containers. I think that's pretty clear. Okay, let's go to the next column. Uh, hopefully this is uh, a little bit easier. Um, oh man, okay, so baby crying, uh, family sad. Uh, a, 